started speaking English again. Sorry, or Scottish again. Sorry, Father. Um, <laughs> later on, I was giving Dad a spell, and I was sitting at the side of Mum's bed when she grabbed my hand, and she squeezed it really hard. She hunched up her legs under the sheets, and she started heaving and puffing. I went for the buzzer before realizing what I was witnessing. I was watching myself being born. After a few minutes, the heaving subs subsided, and she asked me if it was a boy. And I said, yes, Linda, it's a very, very big, big boy. <laughs> when we finally came back to Melbourne almost eight weeks after her accident, a long, slow period of rehab followed, which involved many months at the old Hampton Rehab Hospital on Beach Road. Look, Mum made as good a recovery as could be expected, given her age at the time. <clears throat> we were able to return to Scotland, Ireland, and Canada in the 1990s, but life wasn't easy. Uh, it took its toll on my father, and when Mum started displaying signs of dementia while battling the after-effects of her head injury, it was a real blow for all concerned. Now, I could go on and describe the ensuing years, but uh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to give dementia that satisfaction. I'm not here also to get in a soapbox and talk about the state of aged care in this country and how we treat our older people. That's for a different and a much larger forum than the one we have here today. What I want to do now is I want to thank people who have helped us and helped mum over the last few years of her life. First, I want to mention Caroline Kennedy from BAPCARE, who's here today, the organization that administers dad's aged care package Caroline is dad's case manager and his mum's former case manager. Until she came on the scene, we endured mum being regularly assessed as low-level care. <clears throat> Those assessments penalised our family, financially, emotionally and physically, because they stopped us from gaining the support we needed to keep mum at home for as long as possible. I'd like to thank Michael Mitten and Lynn Redmond, who were instrumental in us being able to resettle back in Melbourne in 2003 after a failed relocation to Scotland. I want to thank Robert and Winnie Matheson and Marcus and Rebecca Connors. I also want to thank Winnie and Anthony Gannon and Daryl Kennedy. Daryl produced the short DVD you're about to see and downloaded the background music I selected. That background music is the Mingale Boat Song. I specifically chose that song because it was the last tune mum remembered and was able to hum. I want to thank John and Alison McCarthy for all the help they gave us in the first four years we spent in Caram Downs. I want to thank Christine from Michelle's Patisserie at Keringle Hub, who put up with us day in, day out for a couple of years, and she's a lovely, lovely lady. And on many of the staff at Ritchie's around the corner from where we live. I want to thank Dr. Ken Ball from Langwarren Medical Centre. Unfortunately, I think there was about 10 doctors at uh, Caram Downs Medical Centre and when my mum went into care on the 15th of October, 2008, none of them were available to look after her. So Ken Ball filled that breach and it was very important to us. I, Ken actually looked, did she, he look after wee Lizzie, aye. Um, I also want to thank some of the staff members at Forest Lodge where mum died in room 18. There's four, one, two, three, four, five staff members up the back there and uh, I really respect what you do. You know I've got issues, you know that, but you guys have a crack. You five, and, if, and uh, the other, other people could be here too, you really did have a crack and I really appreciate it. Um, there's one other thing I want to, personal I want to thank, and that's my dad. My father has helped me look after my mum at uh, great personal cost. I'm not talking about money. When I walked out of Forest Lodge last week, I took the advice of a member of staff a few hours before mum died, that big idiot with a ponytail, who I think is a great guy, Big Gary. He said to me, you walk out with your head held high. Bob McKenzie deserves to leave these proceedings today with his head held high. Mark these words well. If not for him, we would have been going through this day some years earlier. So thank you very much, Dad. Thank you. I'll leave you with this final thought. 
Last year, I heard my mum utter the last six-word sentence I ever heard from her lips. The language was simple but powerful, given her circumstances. She greeted me one morning by saying, I look forward to seeing you. Thank you, mum. Thank you. Um, do you want me to do this bit? Uh, after this service, uh, tea, coffee, alcohol, and something to eat are available at the function room at the Sands Hotel in Hall Road, Carham Downs. You're more than welcome to come back and have a couple of drinks on Linda McKenzie, or maybe three or four. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank really appreciate it. With no disrespect to anyone, that's about the best I've ever heard at a funeral because it had everything. Well done, Craig. Your mum would be certainly proud of you. Okay, now we'll just watch the DVD. It's what we take away after attending the funeral and listening to the values and to the power of the example that Linda lived so well presented by Craig. I'm going to leave you now with a blessing. It's a Celtic blessing and it's a very important one now because it asks us then to be the kind of person we'd most want to be. It's called Anam Kara and Anam is the Gaelic for soul. And cara is the expression of loved one like in the Italian carol. This is the friendship blessing. And I put it before you as coming from Linda. 
May you be blessed with good friends. May you learn to be a good friend to yourself. May you be able to journey to that place in your soul where there is great love, warmth, feeling, and forgiveness. May this change anything that is negative, distant, or cold in you. May you be brought into the real passion, kinship, and affinity of belonging. And may you treasure your friends. May you be good to them. May you be there for them. May they bring you all the blessings, challenges, truth, and light that you need for your journey. May you never be isolated, but may you always be in the gentle nest of belonging with your Anam Kara. Go forth, Linda, from this world. In the name of God, the Almighty Father who created you, in the name of Jesus Christ, Son of the living God who suffered for you, in the name of the Holy Spirit poured out upon you, go forth, good lady. May you live in peace this day. May your home be with God. Linda, I commend you to Almighty God. I entrust you to your Creator. May you return to him who formed you from the dust of the earth. May the mother of God, all the angels and saints come to meet you as you leave us in this life. And may Christ who was crucified for you bring you freedom and peace. May Christ who died for you admit you into his garden of paradise. May Christ the true shepherd recognize you as one of his own. May he forgive all your sins and set you among those he has chosen. May you see your Redeemer face to face and forever enjoy the vision of God. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. And we pray the blessing. May the peace and the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you all and remain with you forever and forever. Amen. Amen.